Meet the Press is the oldest program on network television, and today we celebrate our 15th birthday. And our guest today is Mr. James A. Farley, who appeared on our first television interview in 1947. He was highly regarded at that time for his political insight, and he still is today. It has often been said of Mr. Farley that he has made politics a fine art. Certainly this century has produced no more astute political observer. Mr. Farley was the chairman of the Democratic National Committee from 1932 to 1940, and he served as postmaster general during Franklin D. Roosevelt's first two terms. He is now the chairman of the board of the Coca-Cola Export Corporation. Ready now to start the questions, Lawrence E. Spivak, permanent member of the Meet the Press panel. Mr. Farley, we're so close still to the uh, election that I'd like to ask you one or two questions about the election, particularly as it refers to New York State. Uh, can you explain why New York State, with such a large registered Democratic vote, I believe they have something like 400,000 more Democrats in New York uh, than Republicans, why they've been unable to elect a uh, Democratic governor in some years or a Democratic senator? Well, the trouble four years ago, Mr. Spivak, was that they got into wrangle up in the convention in Buffalo by in the nomination of a senator. I was a candidate, and uh, Mayor Wagner backed a man named Mr. Tom Murray, and and uh, Mr. DiSapio backed uh, Frank Hogan, who's the district attorney here. They got in such a scrap there that they uh, that the thing got all mixed up, and the delegates left there very much annoyed, and it had its effect on the body politic, and the Democrats stayed away from the polls, and they lost the election. This year, the same thing happened. In your years, uh, this number of years that Mr. Spivak mentioned in politics, you've seen a lot of changes, and you could comment on them, I'm sure, all day. But what about television? Has television made a big change in American politics? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's helped some of them and uh, done a lot of damage to others. I'll tell you what is, uh, television has done in my judgment. Uh, men on television or women on television being interviewed, they, if they're not telling the truth and if they're not sincere in their answers, it's, it's obvious to those who are watching them. Now, I watch men and women on programs where they're being interviewed, and it's obvious the way they dodge the question, they're not telling the truth. And for that reason, I think the viewers of the program know whether it's being, the truth is being told. And for that reason, I think great strides have been made in television. I don't think demagogues can do as well on television as they could on radio. Uh, you know, you, you, am I clear what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. You're saying that television is a good lie detector, which is no what doubt I about it. No doubt. I think it's been. A, if um, may I say that if the late President Roosevelt uh, was operating under the years te television was in operation, we would have carried Mrs. Craig Maine in Vermont, in my judgment. <laughs> Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.